user. Hello everyone, it's Seth, probably better known as Seth Live, and it's time for another edition of Much Abru About Nothing. And this week, we are raising some hell in standard with capricious Hellraiser, trying to find out if the new mythic might be a little better than people actually give it credit for. So let's talk about our capricious Hellraiser deck, jump into some games, see it in action. So capricious Hellraiser, the card we're built around, it's a weird one. It's a 4-4 flyer that when it enters the battlefield, you exile three cards at random from your graveyard, and then you get to choose a non-creature non-land. From the three cards that you exile, you get to copy it and play the copy for free. So Capricious Hellraiser, it is really, really weird. Uh, it gives you a discount on its mana cost if you get a full graveyard. It gets down all the way to three mana, which is kind of nice. Uh, it is a high-risk, high-reward card. Its ceiling is off the charts. Like if we high roll with this, this can be coming down for three mana and giving us a free one with the multiverse or a portal to Phyraxia or an eternal wanderer, which is ridiculous. On the other hand, if our graveyard's full, we can potentially whiff or just be getting a removal spell or something. So the idea of this deck is we're trying to fill our graveyard. We're trying specifically to get one with the multiverse, portal to Phyraxia or eternal wanderer in our graveyard. Those are our best hits for Capricious Hellraiser. And then we're casting Hellraiser and crossing our fingers hoping that we hit good stuff, hoping that we don't hit three lands or some other creatures or whatever. If we do hit one with the multiverse, it's really busted. We either cast something else for free, we play off the top of our deck. If we have portal to Phyrexia, we probably just win. And then Eternal Wanderer is actually a sneaky good hit, because if we hit Eternal Wanderer, we can just blink Capricious Hellraiser and try again to hit a one with the multiverse or portal to Phyrexia. So step one for the deck is get these cards in the graveyard. And we got a bunch of ways of doing that. Scrap Work Mutt, Jace the Perfected Mind, Fable the Mirror Breaker, Big Score, and one of the weird tensions and challenges of this deck is we got to decide, are we just trying to mass fill our graveyard to reduce the cost on Hellraiser and just take some amount of risk that we could whiff with its ETB trigger? Or are we trying to get one specific card or a couple of specific cards in the graveyard and pay six mana for Hellraiser, but know that we're going to get one of those things? And it really depends on the situation. Like Jace is really good at just dumping a ton of cards in our graveyard. It can come down and just mill 15 cards. Cards. That by itself makes Capricious Hellraiser only three mana, but since we have 15 cards in our graveyard, who knows what we're gonna get with the Hellraiser. On the other hand, cards like Scrap Workma or Fable in the Mirror Breaker or Big Score are really good at discarding a specific card. Our graveyard's not gonna be full enough to be able to get a discount on Hellraiser, but we can kind of make sure that we're gonna hit one of our big things and win the game. Also, like Big Score and Fable in the Mirror Breaker, pretty nice, because they can just ramp us into our big plays as well. The treasures that they make let us ramp into Hellraiser Razor at full price. Also just lets us hard cast one with the multiverse or portal to Phyrexia. We also got one at Troxa, a couple of cityscape levelers, some good stuff to bring back with portal of Phyrexia once we get things going. Otherwise, we get a bunch of removal. A braids, might stone a weak stone, also does some ramping, a couple of sweepers, mana base, a few triomes, a bunch of dual lands, pretty typical standard stuff. In the sideboard, a bunch of counters for control, a bunch of removals and sweeper for aggro, lore and artifacts and enchantments, some graveyard hate, and that is our capricious Hellraiser deck for standard. That's our much approved for this week, so let's jump into some games and see. I really don't know how this is going to go. This is an infamous small Japanese tournament deck. Is it going to be horrible? Is it going to be great? Can Capricious Hellraiser actually compete in a really strong standard format? Is a card good? Is it a meme? How often are we getting the big stuff? How often are we hitting lands and it's doing nothing? Let's find out. Thanks for watching, everyone. I hope you enjoy it, and I'll be back in a bit for the wrap-up. Need some Phyrexia will be one cards? Well, you can snag them from our sponsor, Card Kingdom, over at cardkingdom.com slash mtggoldfish. Much more about nothing time. We are raising some hell in standard this week, playing some, uh, I guess, Jeskai Capricious Hellraiser. Ooh, Mountain A. Eh? All right, well, land go. Sand's not super fast, but we have the Hellraiser and we have a bunch of other decent. Oh, wow, opponent, what is our opponent doing? Could use some card draw or filtering. Big score, big score would be the best. That would, well, okay, Fable the Mirror Breaker is also fine. Uh, Fable of the Mirror Breaker. It's a way to get some cards in the graveyard, make sure we hit our land drops. Sundown pass, go. This deck's really interesting. We have the option of just like trying to fill our graveyard and hoping for the best with Hellraiser. We also have the ability to kind of control it a bit. Discard a braid Oh, and I think Jetmere's Gardens. We really would like an untapped land to play Mightstone and Weakstone. Yeah, we're gonna go for it. 
All right, we hit the untapped land. Play the land. Might stone and weak stone. Draw a couple cards. And, I mean, we're pretty close to being able to Hellraise if we want to. We need one more land. We're actually one land away from Cityscape Leveler, too. What are you up to? Might stone and weak stone. Okay. This is going to be interesting. And passes. The populate's not the best. Wow, that means we literally cannot do anything this turn. That is super awkward. So we will pass the turn. Opponent visions of Phyrexia. It's a land. Yeah, now I'm a little scared. Opponent's gonna be getting to big stuff. Opponent. Kills the reflections, makes a power stone. How about a land? So Hellraiser here gets us Fable. That's not the worst. Skidabeam Battalion. Hits us for a bunch. And gets Power Stone. Well, all right. So this is not good. We're actually in really rough shape here. Sweep the board. Play the Xander's Lounge. Yeah, this went very awkwardly. The fact that we just could not get to uh, six man on time. I'm pretty sure we die. Like, our opponent has these Power Stones, which, yeah, they're built around casting massive things. Hits us. Could have had Lethal with Mishra's Factory. Decides not to. And, all right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well... Uh, yeah, that was clunky running. Farewell in, Lauren of the Third Path in, Disdainful Stroke in, Negates in, Go Down. Wow, what are we cutting? That's gonna be the hard part. We want all these cards, but we also need our finishers. Yeah, that was awkward. If we had hit that land and started to Hellraise, things hopefully would have went differently. Let's go down the Depopulates. Maybe a Brotherhood end. Maybe we can't bring in all these counters. Or actually, maybe we just go down Scrapwork Mutt. It's gonna make it tricky to fill the graveyard potentially, but I think we have to like kind of play the control game here a little bit. Well, let's go two negates. Let's try it like that. Four counters, go down the mutts. We're not gonna get off to fast darts, but our opponent doesn't look like a deck that's trying to do things quickly anyway, so hopefully we're fine. Whew, okay. Well. I mean, this is a hand that could potentially hell raise a one with the multiverse if things go well. Uh, Storm Carp goes go. We can also get the Jace down, which isn't bad. Um, yeah, let's land and yeah, let's Fable first. Get down the Fable. Next turn we can play the Jace with five loyalty. Opponent passes. Well, discard one with the multiverse draw card. Hit you with the Gabo. Yeah, you know what? Let's just fable the mirror breaker. Play the land. I mean, we are set up for the for the Hellraise in. This is one of our best Hellraisers, too. Opponent, Visions of Phyrexia. Well, we should have an okay turn here. Flip the saga. Not going to loot away anything. Play the land. Go to combat. Hit ya. Treasure, treasure. I mean, this is. This is the dream Hellraiser. Hellraiser. One with the multiverse, for sure. Uh, yes, please. Oh, uh, we shouldn't have played the land, should we? Huh. And a... <laughs> ah, doesn't matter! Doesn't matter, Hellraiser too good. Yeah, we should not have played the land there, but... Our opponent went land, 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 Visions of Phyrexia. We went stuff, 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 Hellraiser... Hellraiser one with the multiverse on, like, turn four. Pretty, pretty good. I guess it was turn five, actually, but still, that was really good. I mean, the upside of Hellraiser is actually kind of huge. We saw the downside in game one, is it can, it encourages us to play expensive cards, and sometimes we just draw all those and have issues, but, well, we're gonna, we're gonna try this in case we trust. Okay, we hit a land, which is good. I mean, if we can get to the big score, we can... Little, all right, graveyard hate A. So we're doing that, are we? Well, land go. That is awkward about it. Going to make our Hellraisers a smidge worse. Uh, land and Jace for Phyrexian mana. Opponent counters the Jace. Untaps the Salistus and passes. I mean, I guess we just Jace again. Full price this time. This game, we're probably gonna have to try to hard cast stuff. Uh, mill you. Wow, there's all the lands our opponent wanted. Okay, I mean, we can also just try to big score into our payoffs. Opponent gonna eat some stuff. We had to play something so the Celestis wouldn't flip. Opponent visions of Phyrexia. Passes. Ooh, Atroxa, well. We can improve your Play a land, big score. 
discard probably fable at this point like we have bigger and better plans here make some treasures past the turd one two three four five six seven we can theoretically one with the multiverse into portal or cityscape leveler or atroxa next turn which is ridiculous we would prefer our opponent to tap down opponent land okay opponent taps down yeah down enough opponent gonna draw a couple of cards well, let's do big things. Opponent rack and her bank buster. And Mishra's research desk. All of this I think is fine because our turn is going to be absurd. One with the multiverse. Is it just a Troxa? Probably. What would we blow up? Visions of Frexia? Yeah, I mean, yeah, free Atroxa is pretty good. Hard to say no to free Atroxa. Wow! and a bonus scoops it up. They had the graveyard heat to shut down the Hellraiser and uh, one with the multiverse with some uh, some treasures comes through. That was not bad, not bad. We'll take it. Hellraising, sweet. Much brew about nothing time. We are raising some hell in standard this week. Capricious Hellraiser style and not keeping a one lander. This deck, uh, some decks you can keep one landers, but even I would not keep a one lander in this deck. Uh, all right, that sounds... Not quick, but our deck is not especially quick. We'll put Eternal Wanderer to the bottom. Land go. Uh, opponent also mulligan. Keeping things fair. Oh, there's a Hellraiser. Opponent. Land. Well, uh, Battlefield Fjorge. Opponent. We have some good cards in our deck to steal. <laughs> that is a tiny bit frightening. Opponent Siphon Insight plays a land. Passes. Well, we will play a land and pass the turn. And even more safe and insight. Oh, this is not, this is not ideal. This is not ideal. Opponent, land. Fable the Mirror Breaker from our deck. Well, play a land, big score, pitch it to populate. Draw some cards. I wonder why Siphon Insight doesn't see more play. With how bomby standard is and how much it's about Atroxa and Shieldred, I'm surprised that that card does not see more play. Because with everyone playing, like, or a lot of decks playing those same cards, it seems like it's potentially extra copies of the cards that you want anyway. But when it gets in, it's us. I mean, we can't Hell Raise, although it's not a super exciting Hell Raise. Well, we might not have a choice. Opponent can probably counter it anyway. They appear to be a control deck. Opponent takes our big score. Passes. Oh, yeah, I mean, cast a Hellraiser. All right, it resolves. Exile it all, big score, cast it. Pitches Anders Lounge. We kind of undid the dress, <laughs> sort of. Sundown pass, go. Oh, this has got to be, this has got to be like our Atroxa or something ridiculous. Opponent gonna flip it. Well, we have a pretty good Brothers Hood at next turn, at least. Well, in that case, I guess we just kill the Goblin? We draw land. So Hellraiser for, well, I mean, I guess Hellraiser of Braid's fine. Hellraiser. Exile, a braid. I mean, this works. We managed to avoid having to use wraths and we just wrathed with Hellraiser, <laughs> essentially. Passes, well. And yeah, let's scrap work them out. We could use some, some action of some kind. Uh, discard Sea Chrome Ghost. Ugh, even more lands, don't play the land. The good news about kind of pseudo flooding out with this deck is, no, well, there goes Hellraiser. Is that we can actually just cast our big stuff minus whatever our opponent stole. Yeah, our hand is pretty bad here. I guess this would have got rid of the Wandering Ember. Cash is in for a token and passes. No, well, Battlefield Forge. At this point, we probably start hanging on to lands, honestly. I mean, we will definitely block. We actually want the Mutt in the Graveyard to rummage. Well, Scrap Work Mutt discard a land scrap work mutt discard to populate draw more lands hit you and yeah pass the turn 
One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah, we didn't cast anything in our deck outside of Atroxa. We don't have the colors for Atroxa. Will it resolve? That's another question. Well, cycle the Triome. Full oh, portal. And let's just Fable. Portal on an empty board doesn't do a ton, and it is a juicy counter target if our opponent, I mean, what is our opponent drawing? They're not casting things. They're a Esper control deck. Gotta be counters, right? Counters and removal. What else could possibly be in there? Oh my God. About it. Farewells away everything. Or farewells, that also is possible. Well, that's bad. Uh, land. About it untaps. And passes. About it untaps. A million cards in hand. Yeah, this is like the worst portal to Frax I've ever seen. I mean, Jace would be great. One, two, three, four. I guess we cast it. It gets around Make Disappear at least. It is card draw, and we want card draw. Oh my god. Play a land, might stone in a weak stone. Draw a couple cards. All right, all right. We're finding some card advantage. Not happy that we milled our opponent into memory, Deluge. All right, Shielder's Edict gets rid of our Jace. What is this? Atroxa? Portal? Alright, Hellraiser 2 lands milled. I'll play a Hellraiser. Okay, we get the we get the Jace. That's good. Jace. Mill you draw a card. Fable of the Mirror Breaker. Pass the turn. About it on Getting milled out by Jace is an actual risk because we turn through our deck. We're down to 23 cards. Another Jace could very well mill us out. We're down to 20 cards. Ooh, one with a multiverse in the graveyard opponent. Do we have more farewells? Anything but that. Oh, losing to your own cards is the worst. I swear we're going to lose to this, this card. About it. Passing. Another Jace. Well, discard and discard. Draw a couple cards. Ooh, one with the multiverse. That is a good one. Well, Jace, mill you. How many cards does our opponent have? 31, so we can mill for nine. And then this Jace mills for 15. Maybe that's a better plan? Well, mill you, draw a card. We're gonna stay the course for now. This still mills three. No secret. Ooh, Cityscape Leveler, that's a good card. Attack the Jace, attack our opponent. Could be a Wandering Emperor. Opponent, Shieldred's Edict. All right, gets rid of the token, sure. And to get rid of the Hellraiser. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Well, I mean, we're going for it. One with the Multiverse. Mutt off the top for mana. Decline, land off the top. Fable Mirror Breaker off the top for mana. Oh, are we just setting ourselves up to get farewelled? Probably. Do we even care about blowing up the Jace? Not really. One, two, three, four. I mean, farewell would take up pretty much our opponent's entire turn. All right, let's big score for... F oh, we have 13 cards in our deck? Oh, God. Oh, yeah, we're going to die to another Jace, aren't we? Oh, we can't not cast anything. That feels even worse. Yeah, big score for free. I mean, we're going to lose to Jace either way, so there's probably no real reason to play around it so intensely. Jace full price keep the new one mill 15 I will. please no more jaces no more jace we are straight up dead to a jace a jace just mills mills us out on the other hand our opponent is straight up dead to this jace if it resolves opponent is going to mill a tiny number of cards seven left oh all right sure yeah i mean we were dead to the Jace no matter what. We knew that was a possibility. Our deck did what we wanted it to. So our opponent's a Planeswalker deck. That is awkward. A lot of our cards just don't do anything against our opponent's deck. Depopulate does nothing. Brother Sudan doesn't do much. A Braid seems pretty bad. Although it could deal with opposing Graveyard Hate, which is a possibility. Maybe that's it? We could bring in Lauren. Lauren might be worth it. They likely have some artifacts and enchantments. At least bank busters. Yeah, all right, try, try it like that. Even Portal doesn't feel great in this matchup. Like, the reanimation's fine, but... Okay, what do we do against this deck? I mean, we went off with one with a multiverse, and it just didn't matter. Jace power, apparently. Well, okay. Hopefully this big score finds us some uh, action. Oh, boom, it's Play Play Shivan Reeve. Play the scrap work, Mutt. Discard a portal to Phyrexia. 
Ay, there goes our Jace. Duress is a pretty good card. Well, play the land, hit ya. Pass the turn. Opponent, Seachrome Coast in passes. Well, Stormcarve Coast, hit ya. Down to 16, pass the turn. I'm very worried about this big score getting countered. I think we wait. Opponent takes it. Battlefield Forge past the turn. Opponent land and passes. Do we big score? It's definitely getting countered. But if we don't do it, we're doing nothing, which also uh, is brutal. Untap. Disdainful Stroke's not bad. It doesn't help us in the short term, but it's got to be one of our better cards for this matchup. Eventually, our opponent's going to try to cast something. Passes. Or maybe we just win with Scrapwork Mutt. We are just slowly making land drops. Eventually, we're going to be able to cast stuff. I don't think we want a Hellraiser yet. Opponent's down to 10. Like, they can't just do this forever. Scrapwork Mutt going all the way was not on my bingo card, but halfway? It's halfway there. The good boy. Opponent, yeah? Can't beat the Mutt. Now I wish he had the, the Karn. Where's the Karn? Where's the crowd surfing Karn? Opponent. Land. Counter that. Opponent passing. Well, now we will big score. If our opponent counters now, it's kind of fine, because then we just resolve Hellraiser and hopefully don't low roll. All right, does not counter it. Well, go to combat, hit you with the mutt. Yeah, I mean, play the Hellraiser. Got to do it now because of Farewell. All right, opponent has Disdainful Stroke, sure. Farewell nuking our graveyard's obnoxious. Although we do have a pretty good hand free building. Opponent down to eight from the mutt beats. All right, there's the Farewell, which we knew that was a possibility. Yeah, let's just Fable. It's tempting to big score first, but if that gets countered, it's pretty bad. The Fable sets us up for another shot at Hellraiser, although not the best, not the best post farewell. Could really use another counter. Well, we will discard Portal and Land. Draw a couple cards. Sure. Yeah, let's just play the land and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, let's Hellraiser. Ooh, all right, Portal to Phyrexia, which actually isn't doing much, but it's, it is one of our best cards. It just doesn't do much against our opponent's deck here. I guess it means if our Hellraiser dies, we can try to do it again. Okay, more channel landing. At some point, I guess it's gonna be right to just run this out for no value. Ooh, jeez. Well, Jace, full price. Opponent cycles. Trying to play around Wandering Emperor on Capricious Hellraiser. This might get our opponent to tap down. All right, uh, mill ourselves, I think. We know our opponent has flashback stuff. Yeah, let's, let's mill ourselves. We got plenty of cards in our library at the moment. We can improve. Play the land. Hit you with Hellraiser. If we got that Wandering Emperor, you got the Wandering Emperor. Okay, Void Rens, that's fine. That is fine. It's not a Planeswalker. Pass the turn. How about it untaps? I feel like we're not in bad shape here. Memory Deluge. Well, in response. Big score. Make some treasures. Draw. Well, another Fable. Opponent's going to find something good. Opponent goes digging. What do they find? I wonder if it's worth bringing Graveyard Hate. We saw Memory Deluge. We saw Siphon Insight. Wow, Bonus scoops it up. Well, apparently we can't beat the control deck <laughs> with the farewells and all. Shutting down the flashback is nice. I guess we didn't see much to Lauren. Let's, let's go up a hearse and down a portal and up a hearse. Portal just doesn't... It doesn't do anything. <laughs> they don't have creatures. If there's no creatures to Wrath, Portal gets much worse. Apparently it's possible that we can beat a control deck. Didn't really make it look easy, but we did get there. We're on the draw. Game three. Capricious Hellraiser versus Control. Ooh, we're gonna keep it. We are gonna keep it. Hopefully this Mutt finds us a land. Ooh, all right, losing the Mutt could be bad. That could, wow. Dreams of Steel and Oil, yeah. Huh, I mean, this is their, okay, they take the Hellraiser, interesting. Play the land, run out the Mutt. Discard Eternal Wanderer. Could use a blue source. Double Jace, but no blue mana. Pick Numa. Wow, still no blue mana. Well, hit you with the Mutt. Land Fable, the Mirror Breaker. All right, opponent's got a counter. We're, we are not a Boros deck. <laughs> we are definitely not a Boros deck. Opponent, land. Thinking about something. 
opponent runs out of Jays. They have the blue mana. Takes up on the Mutt. Well, okay. Fable of the Mirror Breaker. Battlefield Forge. No attacks. Ooh, thank you, opponent. Oh, well, okay, those are not... Wow, where are the blue lands? 15 cards, all Boros mana. Opponent can take a Jace. Well, discard one with the multiverse. Discard Cityscape Leveler. Yeah, everything at Jace, I think. We just gotta make sure that's gone. Kill the Jace. Play Xander's Lounge, pass the tur. Okay, things are, they're starting to look up. This Disdainful Stroke's super helpful. A bonnet, passing. More Jaces. Hit ya. Make a treasure. Play a Jace. Do we have a counter? We're hoping to get our opponent in a position where they have to fare well, and then we just counter the fare well and then win, essentially. All right, Storm Carp from Coast is fine. Pass the turn. Memory Deluge. Sure, we're not going to counter that. I mean, we're also close to getting back the Cityscape Leveler. Even if it's not blowing anything up, it would still be pretty good. Oh, come on. Show us that farewell. Show us that farewell. Boom. Disdainful Stroke it. <laughs> the easiest Disdainful Stroke ever. Well, Jace. Mil Wait, do we win? I think we win. Mill us. Shivan Reef, Cityscape Leveler. And this looks like lethal. Oh boy. Apparently we can take down the control deck. An opponent. Done, done, done. Okay, game one went so bad. Games two and game three though. Like, we beat the Farewells. We beat the Planeswalkers. That was, uh, that was pretty impressive. Maybe Hellraiser's good. It's very, it's very swingy. Obviously, the way it's, uh, ability is designed. There's gonna be times it does nothing. There's gonna be times it does everything. Essentially, though, like, the flying body's fine. So the floor isn't horrible. And then you're essentially buying this upside where sometimes you're like, oops, I just accidentally have a one with the multiverse or something on turn four or whatever ridiculous thing. So it's like, the card is a little bit below average if you don't high roll, but when you high roll, it's so good it makes up for that. But yeah, let's keep doing that. Much improved about nothing time. We are raising some hell in standard, and can we keep this? You know what? We're gonna keep this. It's not a good hand, but we do have to depopulate. As long as this is a matchup where depopulate's good, it should be fine. We probably want to hold on to the cycling land in case we flood. Flood more. Ooh, okay. Good, good, good. Blossoming Sands is the kind of land that we want to see. <laughs> Green and white seems like a color that might have an issue with depopulate. Gala, wow, so many depopulates. Uh, Storm Carve Coast, and oh, I'm tempted just to one. Yeah, you know what? I think we just, yeah, I think we just kill the Gala Greeters. We have so many Wraths in hand that letting our opponent start to make treasure seems unwise. Spirited Compa- Ooh, is this a- Could this be an Elish Norn deck? Could be green-white Elish Norn. More lands. Uh, well, Storm Carve Ghost, go. We are not going to depopulate just a Spirited Companion. And we will cycle this Jetmere's Garden, though. Hits us for one. This has got to be an Elish Norn deck. It's gots to be another Gala Greeter. Well, maybe we were too greedy, another Spirited Companion. Well, cycle the Jetmere's Gardens. City Escape Leveler. Boy, this is the, this is the most expensive hand ever. Opponent grows a Gala Greeter. I think we can wait another turn. Yeah, let's pitch a portal in case we draw a Hellraiser. This would be the turn where our opponent would play Elish Norn. Wrathing after the Elish Norn seems better than Wrathing before the Elish Norn. Uh, opponent. Gotta be Elish. No way you're playing these cards if you're not playing Elish Norn. This looks like a deck I would build, honestly. Opponent. Well, at this point, our best draw is Hellraiser because we're guaranteed a portal. Opponent gonna go attacking. Yeah, let's chump. We are no longer guaranteed a portal. Yes, let's Wrath. Blank Sangelic Overseer. Yeah, let's get back the Mutt. Discard this land. We really want some velocity. We're getting to the point of the game where we want to be at, though. Where we're going to be able to cast our big stuff, which is good. We just need to draw our big stuff or our card draw. Opponent plays a land. Another overseer. 
Ambitious farmhand. Oh, we're gonna have to wrath again. The opponent gets in, hits us. Come on, deck. Real draw. Fable of the Mirror Breaker. Well, play the land. Depopulate. Fable of the Mirror Breaker. Pass the turd. I mean, I guess Cityscape Leveler is another Elish Norn answer. Gala Greeter. Wood Caller. What is this card? When enters the battlefield, if you cast an untapped target land, it becomes a tree folk with power top is equal to its. Okay, okay, so I get a 3 3 hasty land. Spicy. And ossifies the goblin. Boy, I wish we had one more land. Uh, discard one with the multiverse. Draw a braid. Wow, we're like one mana short. We're getting outvalued. We're getting Norned. Opponent, land. There's the Elish Norn. Kill the Gala Greeter? Hopefully there's no follow-up here. Opponent hits us for six. All right, land or bust? Land untapped for, okay. Oh, we hit the untapped land. We flipped the Saga, not dead yet. Shiv and Reef, Cityscape Leveler. Blow up the mob. Pass the turn. The game is on. Still a fragile spot if our opponent has a removals. Oh my God. Okay, well, that's the game. Now, no, wow. Well, if we're gonna, if we're gonna take a loss, it might as well be to Elish Norn, I guess. That was awkward. We see what our opponent's doing. Disdainful strokes in. Farewell to populate in. Cut the might stone and weak stone. A brother's hood's end. And two mutts, I think? We still have a lot of Elish Norn answers, right? Do we need the, you know what? Let's go one fateful absence down one of braid. Run it like that. Just so we have another way to deal with Elish Norn. Well, that was, all we drew was Wrath. That was a very awkward game. We just Wrathed a bunch, but really didn't do anything. Oh, well, we cannot keep the one lander. Oh God, okay. Well, depopulate, I guess, to the bottom. Actually, we can probably put a land to the bottom, right? Let's just put a land to the bottom. That's fine. We got Fable. We should hit our land drops here. And as we saw last game, having every wrath is super good. How <laughs> about it? Ambitious farmhand. Yup. Atroxa. All right, well, Fable of the Mirror Breaker. Yeah. Land for our opponent, Lauren. It's actually kind of bad. That means we might be missing land drops here. Well, go to combat, hit you with the goblin. Make a token. Big score. Discard a depopulate. Hit our lands, play the tap land. Ooh, wait, three, four, five. Does this mean we get to Atroxa next turn? I think we get to Atroxa. Opponent, tap land. Yeah, that should be decent. All right, Inspiring Overseer, that's, that's a good card. It is not Atroxa, opponent hits us. Uh, land. Uh, Atroxa time. Our one of fun up. How many do we draw? Oh god, that's a lot of lands. Xander's Lounge and a braid. A fable of the mirror breaker. Portal to Phyrexia? Can we get away with taking one with the multiverse? One, two, three. We're gonna have six lands. We can wrath. We have a Jace. You know what? Let's go full greed mode. And then we'll not take the Xander's Lounge because we're gonna be playing this land. Uh, we'll just take a Storm Carve Ghost. All right, well, <laughs> we will put 20 mana worth of spells into our hand and uh, hope for the best. Okay, and you kill Atroxa. If they have to ossify Atroxa, it's absurd because then we can farewell the ossification. Elish Norn. Opponent passes. Oh, I mean, go to combat, hit you with Atroxa. No chump. Uh, well, Stormcarve Ghost. We can't let them untap with this, right? That would be less than, less than optimal. I mean, we can't let Elish Norn live, that's for sure. Yeah, let's just depopulate. Draw a card. Pass the turn. I mean, we're trying to get to a turn where we go... Hey oh, uh, trying to get to a turn where we go... One with the multiverse in the portal of Phyrexia. Ooh, Capricious Hellraiser. It's not bad. Oh, but then we might exile the Atroxa. Maybe we wait. Let's just play a Seachrome Coast. Play a Jace, full price. Tick up on Ao and pass the turn. Opponent plays a land. I mean, next turn is a big one. This is the turn we've been waiting for. Woodcaller, okay. Sure, untaps the land. Goes to combat. Kill the forest. About it. Ooh, okay, we made it. Oh, we could just farewell. That might be better, honestly. 
One with the multiverse. Farewell for free creatures. Ooh, are they gonna blink? That's kind of awkward. All right, opponent blinks. Well, Jace, Milia draw a card. And pass the turn. Who? Opponent gets an 8-8, which means Jace is gonna die. Although, unless they can deal with this one with the multiverse, we get a free portal to Phyrexia, which is ridiculous. Opponent gonna hit the Jace, sure, sure, sure. Passes, oh my god. I don't even know if we want a free portal to Phyrexia here. A free cityscape leveler is probably just better, although that deals with Alish Norn. You know, I mean, how do you how do you say no? Uh, portal to Phyrexia for free. Get rid of the 8-8. Oh my god, they blink it again, okay. Jace, full price. Mail you draw a card. You won't stop. No secret. Land off the top. Ooh, Disdainful Stroke on top. That's nice. Pass the turn. Okay, I think we're good. I mean, opponent has an 8 a We can kill it if we want to. I don't even know if we need to. Lauren. Oh, all right. Well, in that case, we do have to kill it. I assume they have to blow up the portal here, which is kind of a bummer for our opponent because we still have one with the multiverse, but... And an angel. Well, I mean, let's see if we can high roll with Hellraiser. 10 cards in the graveyard. There are some good, oh my God, Cityscape leveler number two. Capricious Hellraiser, we will pay the price. Come on, show us a portal, show us a portal, show us a portal. Oh, we didn't get the portal. We get in a braid. Blow up a clue token. Well, Cityscape leveler for free. Blow up Lauren. <laughs> when the deck goes off, it really goes off. Mill ourselves, draw a card. Scrap work mud off the top. Pass the turn. I think we might be good here. <laughs> I think we might be good. One with the multiverse is a very strong card if it stays on the battlefield. Taking advantage of their power stone mana. Well, that was not the best Hellraiser. I mean, that's the thing though. If you got 10 cards in your graveyard, our odds of hitting portal is what? 10% or something? Sure. Extraction specialist. Gonna get back a ambitious farmhand. We just have so much power on the battlefield though. Opponent gets a land. Plays a land. Sure, we will untap. We will draw. Land off the top. Swing. Extraction specialist. Give him a power stone, hit ya. Well, Jace, Milia for three. Jace off the top, pay mana for it. Eternal Wander off the top for free. Jace, Mil you draw. Oh, draw three now. Ooh, all right, let's do it again. Hellraiser, Hellraiser, can we hit this time? Show us that portal, show us that portal. Eh, okay, one with the multiverse, that's that's fine. That's fine, we'll take another one of those. And then, I mean, I think this is probably incorrect because they could have, well, we have a sweeper. All right, Cityscape leveler number two for free. Blow up your angel. Yeah, we have the counter, so I guess this is fine. Blink a Hellraiser? Keep the good times, the good times rolling, get it back. One, two, three. If you if you Hellraiser often enough, sooner or later you're gonna hit the stuff you want. <laughs> we still haven't found the portal, but if we just keep doing it, wow, what a game! Look at this board. Look at this board. It opponent scoops it up. That was amazing. <laughs> that was that was probably the best game yet. Honestly, run it back, man. Maybe maybe Hellraiser is actually not that bad. Even if you can't control it, like even when we low roll, like you can get the ultimate low roll and hit like three lands or something. But even when we low roll, we're getting like a remove spell, a fable of the mirror breaker. We're getting something that's good. Like, and then when we high roll, whoo, and get a uh, one with the multiverse or a portal or whatever, kind of ridiculous. Play second. Yeah, we'll try this. This hand's actually not bad. We can do things early. We got some card draw. Ooh, and a fable. All right, this hand's actually pretty good. I wonder if these lands should be played more. Ooh, Hellraiser. Don't really want to discard anything here. Yeah, I think we actually just don't play the mutt yet. Opponent planes and jewel thief. Now play the land, play the Jace. Take up on the jewel thief. We don't have a sweeper at the moment, so if our opponent just ramps into Elish Norn, it's gonna stick for the time being. 
All right, Overseer draws a card. And a land and gains a life. Hmm, can we mill with Jace? Uh, I guess we should probably just tick up. Tick up on the Jewel Thief. Play Deserted Beach. And yeah, we're just gonna pass in big score, I think. About it. We wanna find a Wrath in case Elish Norn comes down or some removal for Elish Norn. This is also actually gonna give us the mana for Hellraiser, but we don't have anything worthwhile in our graveyard. We could, I guess, mill with Jace and see, see what we see. Oh, and, all right, there's the mom. Well, big score, discard Shiv and Reef. Oh my God, okay, well, new plan, uh, disdainful stroke. <laughs> Counter the mom. Well, play the land. Fable the mirror breaker. Mega goblin. One has three cards in hand. Yeah, let's keep doing the same thing. Take up on the jewel thief. Pass the turn. Eternal wanderer might be good here. Opponent. Oh, uh, the woodcaller. Well, okay, it's gonna be very good. Opponent plays a land. So this means I get to kill the Jace? Or we chump? Yeah, let's keep the Jace. So Jace goes to two. Jace gets pretty good after we Eternal Wander. Oh, wow, farewell, okay. Well, discard the Mutt for sure. Keep the rest. Play the land, play Eternal Wander. Take down Eternal Wander. Opponent's gonna blink. Well, all right, opponent gets to keep the Overseer. Take up the Jace. Okay, okay, opponent plays the land. They do have an 8-8. And a Lauren. I mean, I guess we're kind of rooting for our opponent to just, yes, tap out. Cause then this farewell is going to make our opponent very, very sad. Opponent gets in, it's our eternal wander. However, there's bad news for our opponent, which is, oh, we don't even need to farewell, do we? We can just depopulate. Six cards in the graveyard. Ooh, all right, so this is kind of cute. Mill three. Oh, Gets us to nine cards. Play Storm Carve Coast. One, two, three, four. Depopulate. And uh, now we're gonna raise some hell. Okay, what what could we roll into? Eternal Wander, Fable, Big Score, I guess, are our best hits. I guess another Jace would also be fine. Well, Hellraiser. Give us something good, give us something good. Uh, we'll take Eternal Wander. This is actually great because Eternal Wander lets us blink the Hellraiser and then do it again. Hellraiser, one, two, three. Big score, discard the land. And now we can just Hellraise every turn if we want to. Pass the turn, about it adapts and scoops it up and that is hellraiser power that is hellraiser power again and again and again if you do it enough it's gonna be good wow all right that's that's another win not losing with hellraiser so far sweet 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 much more about nothing time we are raising some more hell in standard and Play Xander's Lounge. I mean, this hand, we have the Hellraiser. We could use a big draw to get something in the graveyard. That would be the best. Opponent playing some Mono White. Apparently one of the one of the best decks. In, oh, okay, that's something big to get in the graveyard. Shivan Reef and Scrapwork Mutt. Discard one with a multiverse, draw a brotherhood end. So ideally, and this may or may not be possible, but ideally we would like to have only three cards in our graveyard or less when we cast this Hellraiser. Okay, that's fine. It goes to exile. Exile is good. Not in the graveyard, opponent. Roadside Reliquary gets and hits us. Reckoner Bank Buster. Well, play the land. Fable the Mirror Breaker. Go. The treasure here would be huge. Like we're just, all we want to do is get this one with the multiverse on the battlefield. That is, that is the game plan. One with the multiverse into free Atro free Atroxa, into GG Mono White. About it, plays a land. Lauren of the third path, gonna blow up our Fable the Mirror Breaker. Okay, passes. Hit you with the goblin. Make a treasure. Okay, so we can afford one more card in the graveyard, right? Without messing this up. Let's play Deserted Beach. 
Oh, no, 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 we don't want to do that. Was thinking of Brothers and N on artifacts, but then that would blow up our treasure. You know what? Let's just, let's just pass. No Elish Norn, please. Elish Norn would make us sad because that would shut down Hellraiser and just ruin our plans. Oh, okay. Okay, that's good. Oh, that's good. Oh my god. Okay, it's happening. Bonet. Roadside Reliquary. Sure, gets in, hits us for one. Sure, sure, sure. I have bad news. Abonet, we about to raise some hell. Abonet passes a Battlefield Forge. Capricious Hellraiser. Two cards in the graveyard. Exile them both. And play a one with the multiverse for free. And then one with the multiverse lets us play Atroxa for free. And that was a that was a decent, that was a decent turn five. Not bad. We'll take a Jace. Storm Carve Coast. Big score. Fable of the Mirror Breaker. Wow, all of our big artifacts. Yeah, Cityscape Leveler is probably the safest choice. Your go, Mono White, your go. About it, gonna draw a couple cards. We will discard a scrapwork mutt. What do you say, Oponorino? Even if they kill Atroxa, it's not even that good. <laughs> we only have one Atroxa. We're not really an Atroxa deck. It's just a one of, but. Main phase bank buster to draw a card. Can you kill a one with the multiverse? And an Atroxa. And a Capricious Hellraiser. I mean, if we untap with this board, I don't see how our opponent gets back in this game. That was Capricious Hellraiser at its at its peak. That is peak Hellraiser. Wow, opponent passes. Oh my god. Uh well, we'll play a portal to Phyrexia for free. Might as well. Land off the top. Hit you a bit. Discard scrap work mutt. Draw a couple cards, make a couple treasures. A Bray the Bank Buster. Yeah, we'll just, we'll pass the turn. Discard a Mutt, discard a Storm Carve Ghost. <laughs> This is standard. We are doing that. that. Farewell would give our opponent hope, even though, wow, they actually do have Farewell. All right, so opponent has Farewell, so they're not 100% dead yet. Play a Jays for full price. Mill our opponent, draw a card. Play a land, Fable the Mirror Breaker. Wow. So the main deck Farewell gives our opponent some small chance to overcome just like our ridiculous hell raising. I still think we're in pretty good shape here, but the game's not over. The game would have just straight up been over if they didn't have the Farewell. The good news is we're to the point where we can just hard cast <laughs> whatever we need. And we still have a lot of card draw. Hellraiser has been very impressive. <laughs> Way more impressive than I expected. Would you like to sack your roadside reliquary? It is technically legal, right? Ossification hits the goblin, sure. Sure, oh, it hits the Jace, okay. Although we can just level it and get it back. All right, Ossification hits the goblin. Passes. Decline. Play a land. Cityscape leveler. Blow up the Jace ossification. And now I think we actually do mill ourselves. Mill ourselves, because we drew the Hellraiser, so we might as well see if we can mill something bomby. Well, oh, all right. A Fable's fine. Not super exciting, but it's fine. I mean, even a 4-4 flyer for six that comes with a free Fable the Mirror Breaker, that's still not a bad magic card. We did give our opponent some card draw. Sarah Paragon. All right, opponent's gonna fight the good fight. And Ossification returns. Going after the leveler. And Ossific, wow, so many Ossifications. Sure. Well, flip the saga. How much do we care about Sarah Paragon is the question. What can I recast? Wedding announcement or steal Seraph? I guess that's fine. Well, that's just Hellraiser. Get back our Fable the Mirror Breaker. Make a goblin. Play the land. Pass the turf. I can't believe this game's still going. I thought this game was gonna be over <laughs> several turns ago. Farewell is just, it is the ultimate get out of jail free card. We had such a ridiculous start, but Farewell just undid it all. Which, I mean, I think in this case is a good thing. Like the start we had was so just bonkers that having the option to, having the option to uh, undo it is probably a good thing for standard. Opponent. I mean, we got a lot of big whammies left in our deck. Steal Seraph and a land. Lifelink on the Paragon, I assume. Vigilance on the Paragon. Gets and hits us. Are we just keeping everything? Probably. Yeah, let's keep it. Make a treasure. See how our opponent blocks. Okay. 
to sweep the board. Full price Jace. Mail you. I think we actually hold on to the Sea Chrome Coast. That's a good thing to discard to these infinite big scores. 25 cards left. Pony has 32. All right, all right, all right. What do you got, opponent? I mean, opponent does get to draw some cards as well with the roadside reliquaries. Oh, I hope we don't lose this. This would be ridiculous if we end up losing this. Sanctuary Warden. That's a good one. Oh, all right, all right, all right. Maybe this is bad. Sanctuary Warden draws a card, and makes a token. We draw land, not very helpful. So we have two Jaces left in our deck. Okay, let's big score. Discard a land. I mean, I guess we need to draw the card, actually. It's tempting just to mill. Well, if we mill for nine, we're pretty close to just winning with a future Jace. Yeah, let's do that. Let's just mill for nine. Brotherhood and three damage to stuff. Play the land. Big score. Discard the Battlefield Forge. I mean, one with the multiverse is good. Even after this hit, we're still at 20. 18, like, uh, a Jace is pretty much going to be lethal. Oh, no. Okay, so a Jace is going to win us the game. If we can find a Jace, it just wins us the game. But it's only got 16 cards left, so that's the game plan. Just stay alive until we Jace... We have two left out of 20 cards. Opponent goes to combat, gets and hits us. No counters to remove. Sure. Opponent makes a token. I guess we should just big score. Puts us down a couple treasures, but seems worth it. Big score, discard a land, draw some cards. Can we find a Jace? Not yet. Ooh, Hellraiser. Ooh. Hellraiser could hit Jace. <laughs> that is possible. Uh, so, one with the multiverse. See what's on top. Let's play the land. Hellraiser for three mana. See if we can hit the Jace. Jace, 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 Jace for the win. Jace for the win. Big score. All right, well, we'll big score. Discard a Jetmere's Gardens. There it is, there it is, there it is. That's a Jace. We will cast it for free. And that should do it, right? That should do it. Jace, mill 15. Opponent's gonna have a single card left in their deck. Mill 15, one left. So our opponent has to literally win the game this turn. Go ahead, enjoy your one last card. About it. Wandering Emperor. So uh, the mill plan, eh? Through the farewell. We got off to our, our dream start. The farewell set us back, but then the old backup Jace mill plan coming through. That is an empty library and opponent. Done, 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 done. Uh, all right, mono white. Oh, mono white. Farewell in, brotherhood and out. Disdainful strokes, negates in. Portal to Fraxia maybe in. Go down two abrades. Well, maybe we just stick with two portals and go down like two mutts. Actually, let's go down the mites. Well, my turn weak zone does kill Sanctuary Warden. All right, let's 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 do it like that. Let's do two negates, two disdainful strokes of fateful absence on a game number two against Mono White. And yeah, that's fine. We needed a land drop, but as long as we get a land, we get to the, the fables and the jaces. Oh, Atroxa. Not uh, the most ideal draw at the moment. Opponent planes and passes. All right, so we hit the land. Let's shiv and reef. Do we even play scrap work mutt? Yeah, I mean, I guess we do. Scrap work mutt. Discard cityscape leveler. Pass the turn. Planes for our opponent and wedding announcement. Oh, play the land. Feeble of the mirror breaker. We're slightly Jace flooded. Well, pass the turn. The real question is, do we try to keep Atroxa? All right, opponent found Graveyard 8. That's awkward. Discarded Jace, discarded Depopulate. Oh, no land. Make a, make a treasure. I mean, we still should be able to make this work. We can big score. 
discard the Hellraiser. We really gotta hit a land here, though. If we whiff on lands here, oh no, oh no. Oh boy, okay, past the turn. That is some not great running. <laughs> we went like so many cards deep to not hit a land there. About it. Does some unlicensed her shenanigans. Well, we're definitely in hardcast at Troxum. Oh, another wedding announcement. About it. Passes, tokens, flips. Portal to Phyrexia. Also not a land. Going to triple block. Oh, big score. Discard another Hellraiser. We gotta hit a land now, right? Okay, there's all the lands that we were not able to find earlier. Play the land, pass the turn. We kinda want a farewell, honestly. Opponent goes after our graveyard. A farewell would be the best. We need to reset these enchantments. Opponent, ossification. Like, we can run out portal, but portal's not even that good here. Opponent gets and hits us. This probably means we got a Troxa to dig for Farewell. Uh, play the land, play a Troxa. Go digging for primarily Farewell. That's a lot of nothing. Um, so, one with the Multiverse. Scrap Mutt, Disdainful Stroke, Storm Carve Coast. Like, real question is, can our opponent answer a Troxa? Yeah, <clears throat> Unlicensed Hearse is getting big. Scrapwork Mutt, and I guess Might Stone and Weak Stone. All right, live, live Atroxa, live. We really need you to live. Yeah, we were kind of counting on that finding a farewell and it just did not happen. I mean, we're still in the game, but this has definitely not been our optimal, optimal running scenario. Wow, opponent just passes, okay. Opponent takes it to 11. I think we just pass him big score. Gaining seven there is kind of huge. We were getting a little low on life, especially with this hearse around, but bone it. Keeping the graveyard clean. Runs out a wandering emperor. Not going to spend our disdainful stroke on that. A boon it passes. Or untaps, makes a samurai. Are we just dead if they draw ossification? Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. We're not that alive, Found at land. Maybe this one Atrox is gonna carry. What are we doing, Wandering Emperor? It doesn't even have to tap because it has Vigilance, so Wandering Emperor doesn't get it. It is just like, <laughs> good in so many ways. Crewing it up. Honestly, I think we would trade Atrox, uh, oh, it gets first strike, okay, never mind. Not happening, Pona goes to combat. I mean, we'll take 11. Ouch. Well, big score. Discard a Jace. Well, there's a farewell. Hit our opponent. Play the land. One with the multiverse. Oh, I guess we should have not played the land. And then portal to Frexia for free. And pass the turn. We still have the Disdainful Stroke. I mean, opponent's got one turn to answer Atroxa, or they die. <laughs> and the opponent can't do it. One Atroxa, apparently enough. Hellraiser just keeps working. I don't know what to say at this point. I guess the deck's good. <laughs> Sweet. Much brew about nothing time. We are raising hell in standard, playing some Jeskai Hellraiser. You know what? We're going to keep this. This hand could high roll. Ooh, I have Elves Sleep right. Can we beat a black deck? Oh, not another land. All right. This hand could high roll into Hellraiser shenanigans. Although, oh dear. Opponent hits us. Oh God. Even more lands. Uh, well, Mountain Go. Oh, this Consent Current is going to get us good. Well, there goes the Fable. We kept this hand specifically because of Fa Fable the Mirror Breaker, and now this hand is horrible. A bone, it hits us for it. Wow, we're so dead. Well, okay, we finally we finally found a way to lose. Mono Black on the play, we keep all lands and die. Yeah, we're not even gonna get to this Hellraiser. Well, I mean, we're gonna block a Valve Sleeper. Actually, what ways do we have to get out of this? Are there any? All right, block a Valve Sleeper. I guess we can abrade a Valve Sleeper. I guess we gotta draw Wrath. But if our opponent has Invoke, we're still super dead. Oh, this is the bad Hellraiser. Well, kill a Valve Sleeper. 
playing a Shiv and Reef. Get back the scrap work mod. Discard a land. <laughs> One with the multiverse hit you at 18. Ha! Huh. Have not seen the concealing curtains in a minute, but it got us good here. You got invoke? Graveyard Trespasser. All right, uh, Wrath off the top, please. Opponent hits us to seven. Wrath or bust, Fable the Mirror Breaker, we will run it out. Play a land, and we are dead to a removal spell. Well, that's a removal spell, sure. Okay, okay, depopulate it, farewell it. Oh, we need some sort of counter. Go down the Brotherhood Ends. Those don't seem great. We'll go down a Scrapwork Mott. Go down a Scrapwork Mott. My Stone and Weakstone does get shielded, which is somewhat relevant. Oh no, are we finally gonna lose? Yeah, we'll go down the Might Stone and the Weakstone. We're just gonna have to Wrath Shielded. Well, we're on the play at least. Our hand hopefully will not have five lands in it. <laughs> I mean, I guess that's one of the problems of Fable of the Mirror Breaker is if you keep a hand that's dependent on it and then you get hit by discard, it can go super wrong, super quick. Uh, scrap work, Mutt. And yeah, we'll just pitch the leveler for now into, into another leveler. Okay, okay, opponent plays a land and passes. Well, deserted beach hits you for two. I mean, I guess we can just trade a big score into cityscape leveler if we know anything else. Graveyard trespasser. Sure. Ooh, Atroxa. Big score. Depopulate. Make some treasures past the turn. I mean, in theory, this gets us to Atroxa. Ooh, Obliterator. All right. Opponent gets and hits us. No blocks. We could also try to wait in one with the multiverse. That's probably too greedy. All right. Battlefield Forge. Atroxa. Do a little digging. Deserted Beach, Capricious Hellraiser, Fable of the Mirror Breaker, a Braid. Oh, we didn't hit a Wrath, which is kind of bad. Discard. I mean, all right, has removal for Atroxa. Goes to combat. Let's see if they eat the Atroxa or the one with the multiverse. Okay, eats the Atroxa. I think chump for now. We might be okay here. Bank Buster. Okay, so we get to Deserted Beach. Capricious Hellraiser. Gets a one with the multiverse. One with the multiverse. Cast it. Cityscape leveler for free. Blow up the Obliterator. And that was a reasonably good turn. Invoke Despair is still a little frightening, but that was a good turn. All right, there's Invoke Despair. Ah, uh, well, we lose a Hellraiser. We lose the one with the multiverse. I mean, we do have a Cityscape leveler. That's pretty good. Nothing to Hellraise at the moment. Opponent passes. Let's... Oh, what are we discarding to this Abrade? Abrade. Kill the Graveyard Trespasser. Discard a Fable of the Mirror Breaker. Play a Fable of the Mirror Breaker. We need an enchantment to play around another Invoke. Blow up the Bank Buster. Hit you to 10. Lethal sort of on board. About it. Land. No more Invokes. Shieldred. And a Graveyard Trespasser. Eat something. All right, well, we draw. Four. Decline. So we can Hellraiser. All right, let's Hellraiser. To get a braid. A braid to kill the trespasser. Discard a big score. Wow, opponent's gonna go to one. Get in. Blow up Shieldred. Make a treasure. Okay, so we still have the same full stroke up past the turn. If there's an Invoke, we got it. If there's a Shieldred, we got it. Opponent, what do you got? What do you got, Graveyard Trespasser? That is not lethal, and we definitely have lethal. Opponent, what's that last card? Technuma. Gotta be going Shieldred, right? But Shieldred does, I don't know if any of this matters, honestly. 
Isn't our opponent just dead? Uh, the power stones actually helped our opponent there. That went much better than game one. That went much better than game one. Opponent, shield it. Well, we will disdainful stroke it just to make sure. And opponent scoops it up. All right, one more for the 5-0. Can we get the 5-0? Run it back. Black's a little bit tricky because they do have a lot of a lot of graveyard aid. Graveyard trespasser, just even with the graveyard, is actually kind of obnoxious against our deck. Yeah, all right, we'll try this. Uh, Jetmere Gardens, you. I like the depopulate. That could be that could be relevant at some point. Shivan Reef. Uh, do we just play a mutt? Probably not. Let's just pass. Land. Passes. Deserted beach. I mean, probably Jace. Yeah, let's get down Jace. Yeah, we probably mill ourselves, I think. Yeah, let's mill ourselves, draw a card. Just in case we find a Hellraiser. All right, opponent has shield Z dig to get rid of the Jace. We mill lands and Hellraiser. Draw land. What do you got, opponent? Do you have the shield rid? Soaring. All right, so one's pretty good. Found it, takes it up, gets a swamp. Play him out and scrap work, Mutt. Discard him out and. Well, I like the counters. The counters are going to be helpful. We do got to get through this Soren, though. Opponent ticking up. Junji. Well, definitely going to stroke that. Okay, so this works. So we get to hit the Soren. Play the land. Hit the Soren. Hopefully keep it from ultimating. Fable of the Mirror Breaker. So we no longer have a counter for Shieldred, but we can stop Invoke still. Wow, opponent is aggressively ticking up with this Soren. So far, they have not spent much life somehow. Graveyard Trespasser. Eh? Yeah, let's discard the Depopulate for now and do a land. Well, Shiv and Reef. Fable of the Mirror Breaker number two. Yeah, let's send them both at Soren. We want the treasure for the Cityscape leveler next turn, potentially. Opponent blocks. All right, pass the turn. Wow, Saxo land to draw a card. Interesting. Opponent does not care about the manas. Opponent takes up Soren. Hit something expensive for once. All right, that's a little better. Liliana. Guess we should be countering that. This does open the door for an invoke to resolve. Opponent, no attacks. Another fable. Well, flip it. Decline. Cityscape leveler. Blow up the... Wow! Opponent scoops it up. Okay, 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 okay. And apparently Hellraiser is pretty good because that is the that is the, the clean 5-0, the clean 5-0 sweep all in a row. That's how you raise some hell. <laughs> sweet, sweet, sweet. So what do we learn this week about Capricious Hellraiser in Standard and the deck kind of crushed it. We went 5-0 right straight through and the deck just felt very, very surprisingly strong. So on one hand, I mean, we got a lot of powerful cards in our deck. We have one with the multiverse. We got Portal to Fraxia. So it's not surprising that if we get those cards on the battlefield, our deck's going to do well. The more surprising part is we were able to do that stuff pretty consistently and Capricious Hellraiser itself was was actually really, really powerful. I think we had one game where we stone whiffed and we like ETB'd and hit three lands. Eh, that's gonna happen. But one of the things I realized about Hellraiser as we were playing this deck, its floor is actually a lot higher than I thought. Like worst case, with our deck, we're typically playing a Capricious Hellraiser and getting a, a braid or like a big score, a Fable of the Mirror Breaker, and that's actually perfectly fine. Like a six mana four, four flyer that comes along with a free Fable of the Mirror Breaker or free big score or a free removal spell that's actually still a really good magic card and then we get this absurdly high ceiling where we got to see some games where we really did live the dream we're able to like big score discard a one with the multiverse next turn capricious hellraiser get the one with the multiverse on like turn five and just go off and take over the game so i think that capricious hellraiser it's a lot better than it looks you do got to build around it a bit you got to be able to fill the graveyard you need to play a bunch of non-creature spells if you play all creatures it's etb is not really going to do anything so there is a cost to building around it but if you're willing to build around it and look at our deck
deck. It's not like we're playing a bunch of super janky weird cards to make it work. We just are playing a bunch of big non-creature bombs, the portal to Frexia type stuff, the one with the multiverse type stuff. And that's enough to make the card really, really good. So I think Capricious Hellraiser, it might actually just be a really good card in standard. Standard's really grindy. Having this powerful ETB trigger that's getting us back something is fine. And then the upside of just like accidentally winning the game, because we get a turn five portal to Fraxia or a turn five one with the multiverse into an Atrox or into a Cityscape leveler is absolutely immense. So that is Capricious Hellraiser. That's been our much improved for this week. Thanks for watching everyone. I hope you enjoyed it and I will talk to you soon.